What's up everyone, Hero276 here and welcome to today's video and welcome back to my channel. Today we're running one of my favorite Pokemon to use in the Master League, Excadrill, in the Catch Cup. And we used it to great success. Hopping into game number one, leading Crobat into a Trevenant. And if you see my daily short, you know exactly where this is going. My opponent is going to safe switch into a Togedomaru, and we have Excadrill to respond. Excadrill has a dominant matchup here, going for the Drill Run. Drill Run grabs the first shield, and now my opponent's going to go for a move. Anything is resisted here, so we can take it from this health range. Felstinger going to be doing next to nothing. Now they're going to go for a wild charge. This is double resisted, but as you're going to see, Excadrill is so glassy that it does so much damage, even though it's double resisted. We do get the farm down on the bright side. Back in comes Trevenant, going for a Rock Slide. Rock Slide here going to be doing some very nice damage onto the Trevenant, and we have a second Rock Slide loaded. This could get my opponent's final shield. If they let it go, it will KO. Trevenant goes down. In the back is Steelix. My opponent surrenders, and that is game, set, and match. Hopping into game number two, leading Crobat into Toxapex. This is okay for us. Toxapex would deal super effective to the Excadrill, which is why I'm not swapping out of this matchup. To be honest, I wasn't really sure what to do in this matchup. I'm just going to let them throw the brine, I guess. Let's see what I do next. Apparently, I'm building up a ton of energy, going for the Cross Poison. Now, I thought that Crobat ran Poison Fang, which is why I threw this, but it's actually Cross Poison, which does not lower my opponent's defense. Now, I pivot into Umbreon, and at this point, I'm just going to tank whatever energy they decide to throw. They're going for the Sludge Wave. It's not going to do a ton of damage, and in comes a Ferrothorn. We might be able to flip switch on this if we manage our energy correctly. Going for the Foul Play. Foul Play is going to do a decent amount of damage to the Ferrothorn, but Ferrothorn is very bulky, so we're going to probably need four or five of these Foul Plays to even come close to KOing. Second Foul Play brings the Ferrothorn into the yellow, which is pretty nice. I'm building up to the next Foul Play. Unfortunately, I am not able to get there. They're going to go for a Power Whip here. Power Whip will just about KO, and I'm just going to let the next Power Whip go through. At this point, Umbreon has done its job, and I'm going to come in here with Crobat and get a nice Air Slash down. Before I do that though, I do want to wait the Switch Clock since I technically don't have alignment. At this point, I am fully committing to the Air Slash down. If they reach a Power Whip, which it looks like this is a Power Whip, I will be able to tank it from this health range and still Air Slash all the way down. Crobat farms down the Ferrothorn. We leave with very minimal HP. The Toxapex comes back in, and they switch out into a Trevenant. I don't know about this one. This one is looking pretty much like game over for me. Going for the Rock Slide, we get a shield, and at this point, I'm just going to keep going for the Rock Slides. Rock Slide does hit neutral in this matchup, and does hit harder than Drill Run, which is resisted. I shield up a Seed Bomb, and I'm going for the Rock Slide after over farming just a tad, and this will do some nice damage to the Trevenant if they decide to let it go through. Trevenant does let it go through, it brings them pretty low, and I'm going to shield up again. Our switch clocks are misaligned, and my switch clock is starting to come back up. At this point, I'm going to overfarm just a little bit and go for a rock slide, and hopefully my timer can come back up and I can snipe with Crobat. Trevenant does decide to commit the second shield, switch timers up, I come in with Crobat, and I'm able to snipe with the cross poison. This is huge. Cross Poison takes out the Trevenant. We get the attack boost, and that might just be the saving grace. Shadow Ball, not enough to KO the Toxapex, but we Air Slash down for the win, and we'll take the game. Hopping into game number three, leading Crobat into a Grand Bowl. Any Charm user is a very positive lead for the Crobat, so my opponent is going to switch out into a quick attack, Alolan Raticate. And I was expecting Obstagoon, so I kind of panicked and stayed in. Excadrill would have been a very fine response to this quick attack alone on Raticate, but you live and learn. They go for the Hyper Fang. I'm going to go for the Cross Poison. Cross Poison is going to do some very solid chip damage to the Alolan Raticate. They let it go through, and I'm going to try to go for another Cross Poison. We're able to reach another Cross Poison. Does my opponent decide to commit the first shield? Cross Poison does not get shielded, and at this point, they reach another move. I'm just going to let this go, come in with Excadrill, and get ahead on energy. Hyper Fang takes out the Crobat, but Excadrill can farm down. We get in two Mud Shots worth of energy, and that's free energy that we can use for whatever comes in. They come back in with the Grand Bull. Whatever is in back is definitely weak to Excadrill. Excadrill, though, is taking massive damage from the Charms. They shield up the first Drill Run. I'm farming up, and I'm able to reach a second Drill Run. Excadrill is putting on a lot of shield pressure for my opponent. 
Granbull does decide to give up the second shield. Can Excadrill reach another drill run? Yes, we can. This will take out the Granbull, and we'll have to see what's in the back. Granbull does go down to the drill run. It's Toxapex in the back, and Umbreon with two shields should be able to close this game. We reach the foul play. Foul play is going to do some nice chip damage onto the Toxapex, but at this point, we do have the two shields, so we can shield up two sludge waves. My opponent surrenders, and that is game, set, and match. Hopping into game number four, picking up a lead up against Durangaru. This is not a very good lead for us. I am going to switch out eventually into my Umbreon, which is technically my designated safe switch, but not my best play in hindsight as they decide to come in with a jump bluff. Had I switched into Excadrill and they came in with jump bluff, I'd be able to hit for super effective with Rock Slide, but as it stands, Umbreon is going to be hitting for these neutral foul plays. Unfortunately, these don't do a lot of damage, but they will add up over time because Umbreon gets them so quickly. We body the energy ball no problem, going for the foul play. Foul play is going to be doing some very solid chip damage to this jump bluff. Jump bluff decides to let it go through. We get it into the deep yellow. Umbreon continues to farm up. Unfortunately, they do reach another move, but Umbreon can survive it from this range. Acrobatics will not be KOing, and they're forced to throw again if they want to take us out because I have the back-to-back -back foul plays. Foul play number one will be going through on the jump bluff. Jump bluff does decide to shield that one up. I go for the extra snarl, but unfortunately my opponent decides to throw their energy. That's going to cost me an entire foul play, but at least I do have switch advantage. At this point, I come in with the Crobat, they come in with the Dusclops, and I switch in my Excadrill. Excadrill, I should have saved for the Oranguru, and I should have stayed in with the Crobat. But as it stands, this is not a bad matchup for Excadrill. As you can see, we're able to body the Shadow Punches, albeit, like I said, not that well, and we do hit very hard with these drill runs. It's going to take two to KO. My opponent throws on alignment, giving me a free mud shot, which does give me the inclination to shield. I do shield up a shadow punch. I do decide to over farm just a bit, just so that way I can manage my energy pretty well. And at this point, I will return fire with the drill run. Drill run will KO the Dusclops from this range, and we take them out. At this point, they come back in with the Oranguru. Confusions are really chunking though, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to reach two drill runs. Drill run number one does get shielded by the Oranguru. At this point, I need to defer a confusion onto Crobat, and I'm able to do it. At this point, I'm one much shot away from the next drill run. So if it just comes down to Excadrill versus the Oranguru, I should be able to outpace so long as they don't have any energy. I go for the cross poison, and I get an attack buff. That's awesome. At this point, I'm going to shield up and hope to get to another cross poison. Confusions are chunking. Crobat is farming. Unfortunately, we just get outpaced. It doesn't really matter what this move is. It will be taking me out from this range. It's the Psychic. And despite Excadrill's one mud shot away, unfortunately, the Jump Bluff is still plenty healthy in the back. So this energy will be useless. Jump Bluff will farm down. And unfortunately, we take a loss. Hopping into the final game of this set, leading Crobat into Shadow Mewtwo. This is an awful lead, I will switch into the Excadrill, but because I get the one turn switch, I will be outpaced to the Psy Strike. Excadrill will be shielding up the move, specifically because I have a Drill Run stored. At this point, I'm going to over farm slightly and then go for the Drill Run. Because they do sneak the Psycho Cut through, I envision that they're going to be catching onto something else, so I'm actually going to hold my energy on the next one, and they come in with a Pelipper. At this point, I do have access to Rock Slide, so this will hit Pelipper for massive damage if they decide to let it go through. Pelipper no shields the Rock Slide, and I'm able to reach another Rock Slide. This will KO if they decide to let it go through. Pelipper decides to commit the shield, and at this point, Excadrill has done its job. I will take my shield. Excadrill will go down to a super effective Weather Ball, and I come in immediately with Umbreon and snarl down the Pelipper. We take no charge move damage, which is very nice, and in the bat, they have a goal bat. This is actually possible. I'm going to go straight for the foul play here, as I do not have access to Psychic. At this point, Umbreon is going to farm up a little bit, and they're going to throw a Poison Fang. I'm going to wait till they throw their next Poison Fang and try to catch onto a Crobat. This is so that way I can lure out the Shadow Mewtwo and keep a ton of energy on the Umbreon. At this point, I go for the catch onto Crobat, and I'm just going to use it as a meat shield at this point. Crobat will body the Poison Fang pretty well. Shadow Mewtwo comes back in. Air Slashes are doing a ton of damage. I just get outpaced at the Cross Poison, but there's no sense in shielding since I have a ton of energy on that Umbreon. I'm going to over farm quite a lot. I get the Snarl through, but this should just be a Psy Strike here. I do not need to shield this. Psy Strike will do minimal damage to the Umbreon. I have 100 energy, so I might as well use it. I take out the Mewtwo with the Foul Play, 
And at this point, I have so much energy for that Crobat going for the foul play. This will chunk at the Crobat quite a bit. And with a shield left and still some residual energy, my opponent does decide to surrender. And that is game, set, and match. The team performed quite well in that set, allowing us to go 4-1. But stay tuned because we have three more bonus battles for you today. So let's dive right into them. Hopping into the first bonus battle, and we got ourselves a lead up against Lantern. This is very tricky, so I'm going to safe switch into my Umbreon, and my opponent decides to respond with Galarian Weezing. At this point, I'm going to go for last resort, baiting the Psychic here. Does my opponent decide to shield? My opponent does shield, and at this point, I'm perfectly content with letting every move they throw go. They're going to go for a play rough here. This is going to hit for super effective, but Umbreon will tank it. And my opponent's not going to be able to farm down either, so they're going to be forced to throw again if they want to take me out. Last resort, we'll do some very nice damage onto the Galarian Weezing. My opponent is going to farm up until I reach the foul play. And at this point, I will let the Umbreon go down. Unfortunately, I cannot come in with Excadrill since Galarian Weezing does have access to Overheat, and I definitely don't want to commit my shields. So at this point, I'm going to come in with Crobat and look to do a full Air Slash down. Energy is going to be very important up against the Lantern, and I might have to land a Shadow Ball if at all possible. Galarian Weezing did have access to Overheat, so it's very good that I came in with the Crobat. I should be able to Air Slash all the way down and leave with a ton of energy. Lantern will probably come back in, so I spam the switch button for Excadrill, and Lantern is deciding to stay in and throw their energy. At this point, I'm going to shield up the Surf, as it would be catastrophic from this range. I'm going for a Drill Run. Drill Run will be doing massive damage onto the Lantern if they decide to let it go through. Drill Run does go through, and at this point, I can just double shield and farm down. Excadrill will be taken out by a Surf from this range, so this is probably the move to shield if at all possible. Their final Pokemon is Trevenant, so it's very good that I built up all that energy on Crobat. Going for the Rock Slide, Rock Slide will be doing some very solid damage onto the Trevenant, getting it quite low. I'm hoping to get to another move, but I'm just outpaced. Trevenant will throw their energy right here. Seed Bomb will KO the Excadrill. But as I mentioned earlier, this is where that energy on Crobat is going to come in clutch. I go for the Cross Poison. Cross Poison does grab a shield. I throw one more Air Slash to ensure that the Trevenant's in Cross Poison range. And we're able to survive the Shadow Claws, get off the Cross Poison, and take the win. Hopping into the penultimate match of the video, picking up a lead up against Drapion. But this is not your average Drapion. This Drapion is running Ice Fang, ladies and gentlemen, so we're in a bit of a pickle here. We're kind of forced to stay in here as Excadrill will be taking massive damage from the Ice Fangs, so we're going to go for a Cross Poison. Cross Poison does not do a lot of damage. I'm going for another Cross Poison, really hoping for a shield here if at all possible. Crobat throws the Cross Poison, it does get a shield, and at this point, I'm going to come in with Excadrill and farm down. I do sneak into Mudshot 3, which is very nice, and you know what? I'm going to try to catch a Crunch. This might be a little bit crazy, and it might not pay off. We bank the drill run, and we switch and catch into Umbreon. Did we catch the crunch? Ladies and gentlemen, we caught the crunch. That's a huge catch right there. And my opponent comes in with a Rosalia. I'm not all too familiar with Rosalia's moveset, so I'm just going to shield nothing on the Umbreon and save my shield for the Excadrill. Foul play does come through, and it does some very nice damage onto the Rosalia. I reach another foul play, and if they let this go through, it should come very close to KOing. Rosalia does decide to commit the shield, and at this point, I'm just going to let the Umbreon go down. Not entirely sure what this move could be. It's a sludge bomb. It hits pretty hard. Can we reach a foul play? We cannot. And now it's all up to Excadrill. At this point, I have to shield anything and everything. This is just a sludge bomb. Unfortunately, that's triple resisted. But on the bright side, I can farm down the Rosalia, and I leave with so much energy. In comes a Pelipper, and we're going to go straight for the Rock Slide. At this point, my only lose con is if my opponent catches onto the Drapion, so I hold onto my energy. They fail their catch, my opponent surrenders, and that is game, set, and match. Hopping into the final match of the video, leading into a Trevenant. This is a very good lead for us, and my opponent is staying in as well, so presumably, they're double weak to Crobat. I'm going to go for a Cross Poison to threaten some shields here. Cross Poison is going to be getting a shield from the Trevenant. At this point, my opponent has built up to the Shadow Ball, but I'm going to call the bait. This is a very risky call, but they bait, so at this point, I should be able to Air Slash all the way down. Now I can safely shield up this move without having to worry about giving up both shields in an effort to preserve alignment. For an even shield, I have switch advantage and a ton of energy on Crobat. 
In comes a Charizard. I'm going for the Cross Poison. Cross Poison's going to be doing some nice damage onto this Charizard. I get the boost, bank the Cross Poison, come up with Excadrill. It's Grand Bull in the back. My opponent surrenders, and that is game, set, and match. Overall, we had some very impressive performances from this team. We're currently 8-2 and two in using it, and I don't plan on stopping until I get back to 2500. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my subscribers. Thank you all so, so much for helping me get to 1k. This is honestly a dream come true, and it wouldn't have been possible without each and every one of you. As promised, the Discord server for Harrow and the Hooligans will be available in a couple of days. That said, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. I upload daily short clips and occasional long videos, and I'll be starting to stream now that I have a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.